back speaking with Pete this morning for Brumble Resources. Pete, morning. Morning, Andrew. Look, since, uh, since we last caught up, you've put out these MET test results for Erahidi, uh, strong zinc recoveries. Tell us a bit more about what it's, uh, what it's told you. Yeah, well, it's a lot of it's confirmatory. Obviously, we'd done some uh, preliminary tests, you know, some time ago, but this was a, a a much more detailed. I think there was 120 different tests that we did. Um, very, very com- uh, comprehensive. Ivan Hunter ran the process for us or the project for us. It took about nearly 10 months to do it. Um, and what we've ended up with is uh, we, we've we've generated a bulk concentrate, zinc plus lead over 60, about 61%, um, which is uh, what would ideally suit a uh, ISP, Imperial Smelting Furnace, um, uh, which is, there's a number of those around the world, um, which can handle the, the, the zinc and the lead. Um, so that's positive. And um, we've obviously, we've already sent that spec off to a couple of people just to get some preliminary conversations about, you know, where it might go to and how much material could those people take. And that's obviously part of the, um, the scoping study we're going to move into now. Um, and then we had, the other thing that it, it, it confirmed to us is that we could use um, a technology called Hydrofloat, which basically will allow uh, the rejection of a lot of the, of the waste early on in the, in the flow sheet. And that'll have the benefit of meaning that we won't be running all of that material through the back end of the plant, through the float circuit. So um, that up maybe 30% um, of less material going through the back end. And, and that'll have, you know, significant potential savings in terms of capital uh, and then obviously in terms of OPEX uh, operating costs as well. So look, all very positive. So, you know, we can produce a marketable concentrate as an ex-marketing person for concentrate. That's that's always critical. It's great to have the metal in the ground, but if you can't sell the stuff, then it's not, it's useless. But no, we've, we've confirmed that we've got marketable concentrate. And uh, then obviously we've got this potential to use the hydroflow technology. And there's something like 70 uh, um, plants around the world now using this technology. So it, it's definitely proven. And um, that would be something that we'll now incorporate into the flow sheet. Um, and so when we start our, uh, or part of the process for the um, internal scoping study will be to incorporate that into the flow sheet, price it all up, and then have a look at what the capex opex saving is versus a conventional plant well tell us a bit more about this upcoming scoping study and what what the objectives are what you're hoping to learn sure so we'll we'll do that internally um obviously we don't have um because the um current resource is all inferred i mean obviously you won't be able to get that into a um an indicator without doing further drilling and so um right now we'll just use the inferred we've got the metallurgy and we'll do uh, engineering studies. We'll get an engineering firm to basically uh, cost up a plant. We'll do some mining studies. We'll get an optimum mine plan for the open pits because there'll be a number of them. Um, and then we'll work out what's the optimum plant size. That will then feed through to a, um, a mining sort of annual mining plan. And that'll then feed into, you know, with the metallurgy and the plant optimum plant size. Uh, total tons of concentrate per annum and, and total amount of metal over how many years. That then we will put into an information memorandum, give that out to various groups, um, and we'll start having some conversations about bringing a partner in. And the idea, we, we want to bring in, uh, you know, a major group, whether it's a resource company or a smelting company or a trading company, to basically partner up with us up with us on this project and ideally get them to finance the full bankable feasibility study as a starting point to to get equity into the project that, that's that's the plan so that's a I, I think the internal scoping study you know is going to take a bit of time um so into the new year and then we'll put the im together and then you know i'm thinking the back half of 2025 calendar year will be the conversations and the due diligence by you know the shortlisted group of potential partners well i suppose across erahidi and also western queen you've been kicking some big goals lately so a strong end to the year yeah look it is and, and it was great to get 
all that information out on the day of the AGM. I mean, that wasn't part of the master plan. It would have been nice to get it out a bit earlier, but these things always take a bit longer. And so it was great to get the metallurgy report out because we, we you know, we it had taken a long time and we're pulling that all together. And then obviously the um, uh, indicative term sheet that we've signed with uh, Bain and Mega, which was great to get that out too. Uh, we've just had a kickoff meeting with those guys today. And next thing is obviously... Um, negotiating the full joint venture agreement with Bain and the mining services agreement, uh, which has to be obviously between Mega and and the joint venture. So that's all underway. Um, and yeah, there's a there's um, the momentum is building in here, Andrew. I can tell you, it's quite exciting. Great to see you, Pete. Thanks very much. All right, thanks a lot, Andrew. Cheers.